The Earth is facing some really big problems, and they'll need some really big answers. Rising waters, recurring storms and erosion, the consequences of climate change are causing numerous ecological disasters. And in the face of these climate changes, some regions are much more vulnerable than others, particularly coastal cities and countries facing the imminent threat of rising waters. In order to survive, they must develop strong and effective protective measures. From New York to Japan, through Venice and the Netherlands, today let's explore four ongoing billion dollar projects that might just save the world. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. While New York City is renowned for its towering skyscrapers and breathtaking architecture, it contends with the relentless encroachment of water along the eastern coast of the United States. New York frequently endures the onslaught of extreme weather events, with hurricanes and storms wreaking havoc and inundating many neighborhoods. Compounding this threat is the city's strategic position at the convergence of the Hudson River, the East River, and the Atlantic Ocean, rendering it particularly susceptible to rising waters and sudden flash floods. In recent times, significant floods have already wrought havoc upon the city, particularly within its heart, Manhattan. The aftermath of Hurricane Sandy in 2012 serves as a stark reminder, plunging the city into chaos and claiming the lives of 44 individuals. The economic toll was staggering, with property damage in the nation's largest city estimated at nearly $19 billion. Following this crucial event in New York's history, authorities recognized the pressing need to address the issue and embarked on extensive infrastructure projects to mitigate the phenomenon. Along the southeastern edge of Manhattan, bordering the East River, a massive anti-flood wall is taking form. Stretching over four kilometers in length, it is slated to be buried at a depth exceeding 35 meters and rise more than three meters above the water's surface. Constructed of reinforced concrete, the wall will have the flexibility to expand in size as necessary, proactively accommodating rising sea levels. Expected to become operational no earlier than 2026, this new barrier comes with a price tag exceeding $1 billion. Additionally, the city plans to offset the loss of green spaces incurred during construction by establishing a new elevated park. Furthermore, significant efforts will be directed towards upgrading the underground sewage and wastewater networks to provide a comprehensive response to this challenge. The challenge of rising waters is far from new, having plagued certain cities for generations. Venice, constructed largely on stilts within the Adriatic Sea's lagoon, epitomizes this struggle. The city's fate is intricately tied to water, as its historical prominence was largely built upon its maritime prowess. However, Venice remains perilously vulnerable to a significant threat, the Aqua Alta, or high tide, a period between autumn and spring when the city faces heightened risk of flooding. While the danger is well documented, it continues to escalate. Over the past century, instances of the Aqua Alta have become increasingly frequent and severe. Notably, the majority of the most severe floods occurred after 2009, with a recent extreme example occurring in November 2019. During this event, the city experienced its highest tide in 50 years, submerging nearly 85% of Venice, resulting in extensive material damage. In response to this threat, the city has invested billions of euros in its defense. The MOS project, consisting of 78 movable barriers, encircles Venice and aims to establish a watertight barrier with the Adriatic Sea. The project's goal is to prevent high tides from inundating the lagoon and flooding the city's lower-lying areas, which sits slightly below sea level. Initiated in the late 1980s, construction on the most project commenced in 2003, with the first sections of these innovative barriers installed in 2008. A portion of the project was put to the test in 2020 during a threatening Aqua Alta event, yielding highly positive results as Venice remained largely unscathed. 
However, the most project has been marred by delays in its completion, partly attributed to numerous corruption scandals that have plagued its history. To keep their heads above water, some nations are even investing on the scale of the entire country. The challenge in the Netherlands is long-standing. Over centuries, residents of this low-lying territory, sandwiched between Belgium and Germany, have honed the art of water management to keep the waves at bay. This is no small feat, given that 26% of the country's land lies below sea level. Without the coastal dikes, nearly two-thirds of the Netherlands would be submerged today. These protective structures extend inland as well, reclaiming land from water bodies. These reclaimed areas, known as polders, constitute a substantial 17% of the nation's current territory. In total, the country boasts 22,500 kilometers of dikes, over 1,000 kilometers longer than the Great Wall of China. However, even such extensive infrastructure has its vulnerabilities. In 1953, the Netherlands endured a catastrophic flood that claimed the lives of over 1,800 people. In response, the Dutch government initiated a massive reconstruction and innovation project that spanned 40 years. Dubbed the Delta Project, it stands as the world's largest defense against rising waters, featuring the construction of approximately 15 dams. The Rotterdam Flood Barrier stands as the flagship of the Netherlands' ambitious flood defense project, featuring two arched gates, each spanning 220 meters in length and towering 22 meters high. Completed in 1997, this marvel serves to seal off the canal connecting Rotterdam to the North Sea during storm alerts. However, the specter of rising sea levels poses a threat beyond the nation's coastline. The Skelt, Meuse, and Rhine rivers, along with some of their tributaries, traverse the country en route to the North Sea. With the advent of global warming, the risk of severe flooding along these rivers is anticipated to escalate, a challenge that has been partially addressed. According to a 2021 IPCC report, a staggering 60% of the Netherlands is susceptible to flooding, encompassing both coastal areas and riverbanks. The primary culprit is the accelerated rise in water levels, projected to increase by 2 meters by 2100. In response, the government is poised to invest an additional 20 billion euros to bolster the Delta project and develop innovative solutions, such as floating farms, which could double as shelters during uncontrollable flooding events. The strategy of building walls against the perils of climate change appears to be gaining traction globally. While New York's barrier is initially designed to be 3 meters high, Japan is constructing much taller barriers, ranging between 10 and 15 meters high, along the northeast coast of its main island, Honshu. Construction of this wall commenced in 2011, coinciding tragically with a catastrophic event. In March of that year, an earthquake triggered a devastating tsunami, claiming tens of thousands of lives and wreaking havoc across the region. The ensuing tsunami also catalyzed the infamous nuclear disaster at the Fukushima power plant. Along the highly vulnerable Japanese coastline, 10-meter-high anti-submergence walls had been erected prior to the 2011 disaster. However, they proved futile against the tsunami's force, being utterly pulverized by its impact. Prompted by the urgent need to respond to the calamities wrought by this colossal wave, Japanese authorities mandated the construction of a new, larger, and more resilient wall. In total, over 450 kilometers of coastline have been fortified with reinforced concrete walls, reaching heights of up to 15 meters in certain areas. While this imposing barrier is indeed impressive, its effectiveness remains to be seen, particularly in the face of another mammoth wave, akin to the 22-meter high surge witnessed in 2011, which could be looming on the horizon. Confronted with this global challenge, solutions are indeed beginning to emerge worldwide. However, they are challenging to adapt from one country to another, as each possesses unique characteristics to consider. 
Moreover, such infrastructures come with a hefty price tag, leaving many nations with limited resources to address the issue. Nonetheless, the situation is dire, with the latest scientific reports indicating that water levels will rise across the globe. Fortunately, some ambitious solutions are being championed by renowned architects. One notable example is Oceanix, a floating city project spearheaded by the Danish firm of Jarki Ingels. This project operates in modular units and offers an economic and conceptual model that can be replicated in various regions worldwide. What are your thoughts on these mega projects that could save the world? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.